What's it really like being a Muslim in Britain today? With a rise in hate crimes and a growing prejudice towards Islam, how do Muslims really feel? The far right believe there's an Islamic conspiracy to take over from within. And why are some young Muslims leaving Britain for the killing fields of Syria? In the first survey of its kind, we've asked Muslims and non-Muslims about the big issues of Britain today. Do I need to stand up with a placard and say, I am an integrating Muslim? We've asked them about life in their community. Are we talking about integration or assimilation? About radicalisation and jihad. You experience doors being bashed down. You experience being arrested. I think you get the same response from people who have had their doors kicked down from the, the non-Muslim community as well. And the results have been surprising. We've brought Muslims and non-Muslims from across the country together to talk about our findings. We asked a thousand Muslims and the same number of non-Muslims to answer questions on a cross-section of issues. The results are fascinating and show whilst the two groups agree on some things, there are significant divisions that still exist. When asked about British values, and whether they considered Islam to be compatible with it, our survey revealed some stark differences in views. More than 70% of British Muslims said that generally Islam was compatible with British values, but more than half of non-Muslims disagreed, thinking Islam wasn't in step. Saima and Miranda are neighbours and friends. And pop it on your hair for about half an hour, it strips all the dye out. They agree on some things, but not on others. Well, you're a Muslim and I'm not. Mm. What else? I drink, you don't. I think you don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never been to the pub with you, Miranda, now. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think the differences are clearly there because clearly in terms of our social lives... But, but that's, like, this small. Yeah. That's, like, yeah. not important no, to no. me. And I think the friendships... You Do you make your own yoghurt? No, no. And well, yeah. I do. There we are. There's our difference. <laughs> and I think that, that supersedes, although we might have very different social lives and uh, maybe I some ideas and whatever, but really the friendship supersedes that. So do they have different views when it comes to family values, specifically marriage? I would be looking at suitable matches for my children. I would be looking at um, somebody with good Muslim values. I would be looking at somebody with maybe somebody that could maintain my, my children. My mother wouldn't have picked my husband for me. Um, and I would. Yeah. And, and likewise, my mother, she didn't pick my husband, but what my mother said is you can marry whoever you want, but there are certain criteria that we would be happy that you fulfilled. So in Preston, students Alicia Ali and Tom Konstantinovich looked at the same issue. Our poll found that among younger Muslim women, a fifth felt Islam was out of step with British values. But does Alicia agree? I don't drink, just yeah, because, just not because of like, it is, a lot of it is religion, but I feel like I can have a good time without drinking and it's not been something I've been brought up with. I don't, I don't really need it because I've done fine without it so far. <laughs> so what, what do you think about British culture to go out and get absolutely hammered? <laughs> um, do you think it's stupid? I think everyone has their own way of like letting, letting go and letting loose. And if that's the way that some people want to do it, that's like fine by me. I mean, each to their own. The rise in the number of young Muslim men and women leaving Britain to join fighters in Syria is a big issue at the moment. Nearly 40% of the Muslims we asked said they partly blamed the police and security services for actually radicalising young Muslims. Just 16% of non-Muslims agreed, but half of those non-Muslims we asked said they didn't agree that police and MI5 contributed to the radicalisation of young Muslim men. Who get all the coverage? Graeme Wetton is a former Metropolitan Police Officer. 
Mohammed Khalil advises the police on how to engage Muslim communities. I think the difference between two figures, 40% from the Muslim community and 16% from the non-Muslim community, is because of the perception possibly within the Muslim community. And maybe in my view, I think that's slightly wrong. I think there's been some messages going out that the, the police and security services are very heavy-handed, uh, are not to be trusted, are dishonest. Um, there's, there's incidents that are being widespreadly reported all over the place. I'll tell you why there's a difference mm. in perceptions between the Muslim community and the non-Muslim community with the way they perceive the experiences of the police and security services it boils down to one thing. You experience what Muslims experience. You experience doors being bashed down. You experience being arrested, locked up and in many cases released but nobody's there to exonerate you afterwards and that pain remains with you for a long time and that word gets out into the community. Policing needs to change and be proportionate and fair. I agree it needs to change and be proportionate and fair. I think it is proportionate and fair. I think you get the same response from people that have had their doors kicked down from the, the non-Muslim community as well. I think it's the same. The well, same how can it be proportionate and fair if you look at the stats? The number of Muslims that are arrested and then just released through the back door, but the papers have still put their pictures all over the front pages. They still seem stigmatised for life. A lot, a lot of people sort of think that maybe the MI5 and the police are partly responsible for the radicalisation of young, young Muslim men. Like, do you, think, do you think that's fair? Personally, I think maybe blaming the police on MI5 isn't the right way to go about things. I think like maybe if you're, you feel like you're being harassed by, by these organisations, then maybe you might get the sort of them versus us mentality. It's this dishonest spying on communities trying to bring out uh, the worst which doesn't exist that's causing the problems. There is a strategy for trying to stop young Muslims from being attracted into terrorism. It's called prevent and it's not without its critics. We asked who should do the preventing. 44% of Muslims and 65% of non-Muslims said family had the biggest role to play. That, that, that's really the, the reality on the ground. And that's Anja Manwar spends her time trying to get Muslim communities to integrate more. Jahanga Mohammed is an expert on terrorism issues. What makes a 14, 15 year old girl pack her bags and said, you know, I'm going to become a jihadi bride? Is that a normal thing to do? Um, I, I, is she being radicalised through the internet? Is something well, happening at I can, un I can uh, as somebody who's looked into this, I can understand. How what's happening? Understand? I can understand what's How? happening. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, the I don't endorse what they're doing, yeah. but you have to understand that young people these days are uh, interacting in their bedrooms purely through the internet, and that the message of the propaganda, coupled with the fact that they feel that their their lives are being intruded, they can't live their lives as Muslims in Britain. Young people are being persuaded. There's a strong propaganda, come to, come to Syria, there's a house, there's a car, uh, there's jobs. And we're creating a but state here. seriously, no, seriously, no, seriously tr you're saying to me that you understand, it's almost condoning that. No, no, it's not condoning no. that. It's yeah. saying I understand the, the, the draws uh, that are taking place. A lot of people are going out to Syria for humanitarian reasons. Mm. They are very angry with what's happened. They look at these pictures of babies suffering, houses destroyed, mosques destroyed. It may be best intentions to go out there and, and prevent whatever ha is happening, but raising the funds, the funds aren't going in the right places. The, the, the efforts out there are not going in the right places. They're going to support terrorism. And I think the message needs to come out from the Muslim community. You're not supporting the right, the right, the right means here. You're not doing the right things here. You actually need to stop what's going on out there by maybe preventing it here and preventing people going out. I think a lot of people see that um, there's young lads going over to Syria and I'm, I'm just wondering what, what do you think of that? Do you think that's a, do you think it's a lot of young Muslim lads, do you think that's damaging for I, I think your people, perception I think, of us? Or? I think people are really frightened of terrorism, aren't they? And, yeah. and it's more a fear thing than, a, than a, a racist thing towards Muslims, I think. I don't know, I think there's a lot of people who are, who are quite narrow-minded who, who will associate all Muslims with what is going on. Yeah. People using the name of Islam in a way that is totally alien to 99% to of Muslims. But mm, I agree with that. 
On the issue of integration and whether some Muslim communities do enough to play a part with non-Muslim neighbours, our survey revealed yet more splits in opinion. Two-thirds of Muslims, we asked, said they'd do enough to integrate into society. But 58% of non-Muslims said they believed their Muslim neighbours didn't do enough to get involved. Isn't there almost an insistence that, you know, or, or, or a narrative that Muslims are not integrating, so people are looking out for those non-integrating people? What is integrating? I mean, you and I are friends. When, when we talk, what, what is integrating, you know, we go to school, how did we meet through school? You know, do I need to stand up with a placard and say, I am an integrating Muslim? Surely not. And then I have to say, and I'm an accepting non-Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> We're just mums. Yeah. We've got kids. We're both worn out. We both have kit bags yeah. and football boots and packed lunches and, and dinner money and homework. And uh, that's what life is about. Yeah. And friendship. I just wonder if there's a problem with language here. Yeah. Are we talking about integration or assimilation? That, that for me, that is a problem because I see integration happening. It's like the British when they go to Spain. They stick together. They stick together. No, I agree, I agree. It's not very often that I agree with you. No. <laughs> Millions of pounds have already been spent trying to pull communities together. They call it community cohesion. Our survey has revealed some stark divisions in society but it's also revealed some common ground. To me, British values are queuing. British values are looking after your neighbour. British values are that we c care for each other. British values are very much that uh, we accept people who come from a different culture. And I think that is, that, that's exactly what uh, well, me as a Muslim... Muslims are not very good at queuing, you know. I think it's interesting because obviously you're your own person. Um, yes, I happen to be a practising Muslim, but that has really never but it's, been... But it's people, it's not people. statistics, it's not this, it's not that. It's yes. just... Friends. Just being friends. Yes, which we are. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, who are you again? <laughs> <laughs>